learners welcome to nis studio i am dr anjana agarwal today we are talking about very important issue everybody wants to know about it nutritional requirements of indian nutritional requirements are also referred as recommended dietary allowances in short form we also use the word rda these rdas are developed by national institute of nutrition or given by indian council of medical research or icmr nutritional requirements are influenced by age gender body weight activity level or occupation physiological condition climatic condition health status etc these rdas or recommended dietary allowances are given for different nutrients and they are primarily based on different age groups gender activity level that can be sedentary moderate or heavy special conditions like pregnancy and lactation both are natural conditions but they are special so rtas are given for these conditions initially rdas were developed in 1989 after a long gap they are been revised in 2010 and they are available on the website given here and a book dietary guidelines for indians we'll talk about some of the important age groups nutritional requirements and in this table you will come to know that rdas are given for 1989 which is also given in the book of your senior secondary level in addition the updated version is also given in the lower line it is recommended that till the age of 6 months the baby should be given breastfeed so there is no need to give extra rdas for that age but the baby should be given extra amount of nutrient after the age of 6 months hence the nutritional requirement for 6 to 12 months of the baby is given here because the nutrient nutritional requirement for this age group is largely related to the body weight of the baby or a infant we can say hence the energy requirement and the protein requirements are given in terms of the per kg body weight in 1989 they were 98 calories per kg body weight protein 1.7 grams per kg body weight calcium requirements are 500 mg and iron requirement is 50 microgram please note specifically the unit of the nutrient also at the same time somewhere you will also learn the comparison the 80 calories per kg body weight is given in 2010 the same for the protein and same for the calcium we are also talking about the children between 4 to 6 years you can see the how much energy they require how much protein they require 
and in calcium initially they were only 400 milligram and recent requirement are 600 milligram. Of course, there are various scientific reasons and studies have proved the changes in the requirement. So, energy requirement for this age group is 1350 calories, 20 grams of protein, 600 milligram of calcium and 13 milligrams of iron. Here you will see I have not divided the age group in terms of the gender because till the age of 9 children growth is steady in comparison to the infant but different in age group or the gender starts from the age of 9. And in the table in the book or website you will find various other parameters or nutrients for which the nutritional requirements are given that can be fat, magnesium, carbohydrate, vitamin B1, B2, B3 and D. But the we are focusing here in the video the major requirements of three nutrients and energy because the one reason is also that you can understand and the sources if even if you eat this much then it will provide the other nutrients also. As I told you that the difference in gender starts from the age of 9 onwards. Here we are talking about the nutritional requirement of girls between the age of 10 to 12 years. When you will compare the requirement with the progressive years of life, particularly in this age group, because they are developing into the adolescent and this is again a velocity is high in girls. So, nutritional requirement for protein is 40, calcium requirements is 800, iron requirement is very very high that is 27 milligram and the energy requirement of course is more than 2000. So, we must not think the girl in the age group of 10 to 12 is young enough but the nutritional requirements are very high. Again we will see here the nutritional requirement for the boys of this age group 10 to 12 years. The energy requirement previously and now is more or less same. Protein requirements are 40 and the calcium requirements are 800 and iron is 21 milligram. Now we will talk about the nutritional requirement of the adolescent girls particularly. See the energy requirement. 2440 calories are required and they are much higher than the adult. Protein requirements are 55, they are similar to the adults. Calcium requirements are also similar to the adults, but iron requirements are still high that is 26 milligrams per day. When we are talking of the boys, the energy requirements are much higher, protein requirements are also very high, but the calcium requirement for girls and boys are similar that is 800 milligram and the iron requirements are little higher is 28 milligrams. Now we will come to adults. Those who are working in the office, doing more of the sitting jobs wherever they are, not very active, those adults are categorized as sedentary men. I have talked about the occupation vary the requirement for the nutrients, particularly the energy and some of the nutrients like B vitamins are 
dependent on the energy requirement. In 2010, the sedentary man requires only 2320 calories, 60 grams of protein, 600 milligrams of calcium and only 17 milligram of iron. So you will see that now this age iron requirements are not very high, calcium requirements is not very high because the growth period is ceased now. That is the reason. When you see the protein requirement is considered as 1 gram per kg body weight. So 60 grams of protein requirement relates to the reference body weight of the man that is 60 kg body weight. So 1 gram per kg body weight per day is required for the protein. Now we will talk about the moderate workers. Who is the moderate worker? Who are using some amount of physical activities involving their hands or legs or the muscles that may be in the work, that may be during the exercise, whatever. Those persons are categorized as moderate worker. So the protein requirement is not changed. Calcium requirement is not changed, iron requirement is not changed, but there is a little high requirement for the energy that is 2730 calories per day. When we talk about much heavier work that may be building construction, that may be rickshaw pulling, doing work in the agriculture field, that person requires much higher energy that is 34, 90 or on an average 35 calories per day. Protein requirement is same, calcium and iron requirements are same, but the energy levels are required in much higher level. Now we will talk about the nutritional requirement of sedentary worker. Here you will learn that there is a difference in the gender also. Just now you have learned about the protein requirement. They are 60 grams per day for the men, whether sedentary, moderate or heavy. But here it is a 55 grams per day only. That also relates to the reference body weight that is considered as 55 kg of all women whatever work they are doing it, but the calorie requirements is 1900 calories per day. The calcium requirements is 600 and the iron is only 21 milligram. If this much is attained, that lot can be saved. When we are doing the moderate work, there is no difference in the protein and other micronutrients, but there is an increase in the energy requirement that is 20 to 30 calories per day. Moderate worker can be the housewife who is doing the manual work also, not using much gadgets which are commonly used at home nowadays, but the moderate worker who does the sweeping, washing clothes manually and all other household work, cooking, cleaning, etc. that housewife is categorized as moderate worker. She needs more amount of calories. Women who are doing heavy duty work, they are also doing lot of work in the agriculture field, industries, construction sites, they require much higher amount of energy that is 2850 calories per day. One of the factor we have talked about that ener energy requirement or nutrient requirement is different in different physiological conditions. One of the physiological conditions with the women that is pregnancy. So pregnant women require more amount of energy and other nutrients. You will find that earlier recommendations 
were plus 300 calories as per the status of the women like or the occupation of women that is sedentary, moderate or heavy worker. So, and only 300 calories been updated version of 2010. The 350 extra calories are given to the pregnant women. So, for example, for a sedentary pregnant woman, 1900 is a regular calorie requirement. In addition, add 350 calorie. So, for sedentary pregnant women, requirement for calories is 2250 calories per day. There is also increase in other nutrient requirement. So, 78 grams of protein, 1200 milligrams of calcium and 35 milligrams of iron is required for the sedentary pregnant women. When we are talking about the moderate pregnant women, only the calorie difference will be there, rest of the requirement will be similar. Same is the case with the heavy pregnant women. We are also talking about the lactating women. As I told you that lactating women are those who are giving the mother's milk to their baby. So, their energy requirements are much higher than the pregnant women. But iron requirement becomes the normal as the normal adult woman. Here is an example of sedentary lactating women 1900 plus 600 that becomes 2500 that means additional 600 calories are required to feed a baby for 6 months because the baby is totally dependent on the mother for the feed. So, energy requirements are much much higher. Protein requirements are little less than the pregnant women, but the calcium are same and the iron is same as the normal healthy women. Here I would like to add one more point when we are talking about the nutritional requirements. These requirements are given for the healthy population. Unfortunately, they do not cater specific requirement for different disease condition that can be decided later in terms of the calories, protein and other nutrients with the consultation of the nutritionist or the expert in this area. But when RDAs are formulated, they are given for the general population in good health conditions. This much is required. Let us see what is the interrelationship of food, nutrition and health. Food we eat is responsible for our nutritional status which is reflected in our health status. I repeat, if you learn this much, then you will select the good food in an adequate manner and that will be reflected in your health. Food we eat is responsible for our nutritional status which is reflected in our health status. Then the health of a person depends on the type and the quantity of food stuff consumed. What kind of food you are selecting? Because for example, for energy, you can select the food which is rich in fat. That will give you sufficient amount of energy and fulfill your energy requirement also. If you are looking only on the energy requirement, but if that food is not nutritious enough or provide sufficient amount of other nutrients 
that will not give you good health. Hence, the selection of food in terms of the type and quantity is very, very important to have a good health. Then what is good nutrition? Again, good nutrition is essential for a person. I would add since childhood to grow and develop normally, then only it will help you to remain healthy throughout life. Of course, it does not mean that you will have the good nutrition during the childhood only and later on you can do anything you like, but you have to have the good nutritional status throughout life. Then what are the indicators? How will I know that I am having the good nutritional status or I am in a good health? Simple having energy to do different types of activities. Whether it is a walking, whether doing the study, whether doing any kind of other manual work, inside home, outside home, whatever it is. And you must be alert enough to do any kind of physical activity, mental activity. Third, you must not be very underweight or overweight. So, ideal body weight is one of the indicators of the good nutrition. Well developed muscles, bright eyes, clear skin and long lifespan and ability to resist disease that is very, very important and hence you must be seeing some people in the same environment get frequently sick and some are not. Now, if you eat less, what will happen? If you eat more, what will happen? That is all about the good nutrition. If you eat low amount of food or less amount of food, then you will have the poor nutritional status or outcome will also be the poor in health. What will happen when you do not eat enough food for long duration, not in a day or so, that will result in slow growth and development, low immunity and more illness, malnutrition and low achievements in life in various terms. We must remember health is good when food is adequate and balanced. But health is adversely affected when food or nutrition is in excess or deficient as we have talked about. Let us see if you eat more or in excessive amount of food intake is there, again there is a poor nutritional status and poor health. So that must be balanced. So, there is a close interaction or interrelationship between food, nutrition and health. I hope in this video you have understood the interrelationship, how you will get this because all food contains some or the other nutrient but and everybody wants to know that what are the nutritional requirements, from where they will get it. So, in this video we have talked about the specific age, gender for energy requirement, for protein requirement, for calcium and iron requirements of different age group, different occupation and different physiological status. I hope you have understood the lesson very well. In summary, we would like to do to achieve the good health, what to do? Follow this food pyramid guidelines for good nutrition. Eat adequately, eat liberally, eat moderately or eat sparingly. That means cereals and pulses adequately, fruits and vegetables liberally, moderately the only the this meat, milk and the very less amount of fats and sugar. You must daily follow the sunlight but avoid the alcohol and smoking. This pyramid is very good to understand how to go about it. Thank you very much for this.